हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादी पाय हॉस्पिटल एंड फेको ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली इंडिया एंड वेलकम टू माय कमेंटेड सीरीज इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी डीलिंग विथ अ पिक्युलर केस अ यंग पेशेंट 45 फाइव इयर ओल्ड एंड द पेशेंट्स कैट्रेक्टस लेंस इज जस्ट थ्री पॉइंट टू मिलीमीटर थिक generally as we know with age the lens thickness generally increases and at birth it is around 3.5 mm and by the time the patient reaches the age of 60 it is more than 4.5 5 mm also sometimes in intumescent cataract it can be 5.5 also so at the age of 45 we expect the thickness to be at least 4 to 4.5 but in this particular case it is quite thin and i noticed it uh, in our biometry i generally use ilmaster 700 and uh, so we have to keep in mind about these biometric changes in each and every case sometimes patients have very deep anterior chamber depth very shallow and in this case it is very thin crystalline lens so let's see how i proceed so the first few steps are just as usual the side port was made the 2.8 mm main incision clear corneal was made and now i am going to do the hydro dissection and though it is not seen here on the microscope with the stereoscopic view i can feel that the lens is quite thin and that's a unusual feeling that we have when we are operating it's not a very hard cataract definitely it's a softer one more of cortical nature i would say but it's not very soft also where i can just aspirate it out the anterior chamber depth here is normal so it is not very deep chamber there and the lens thickness also is less so i have to be careful about the position of the posterior capsule because i expect that the posterior capsule will be more anterior than what we expect in a case with normal lens thickness and i could rotate the nucleus quite easily it's good if we can rotate it both ways four five times that takes care of the cortex and cortex becomes quite loose when you do cortex aspiration it helps a lot you can do it uh, after you insert your phaco probe also but in this case i decided to do it before and when i inserted the phaco probe as soon as the irrigation started the patient had little bit of discomfort and that was because of the lidrs lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome as you can see here i lifted the iris to break that reverse pupillary block which was causing the pressure to rise and what i noted here is that uh, despite that block the ac depth was not increased significantly and that may be because of the thinner lens there maybe the zonules maybe are not that elastic and i am going here very carefully for trenching because i know that it is not going to be the routine depth which i am used to for doing trenching so just couple of trenches and you can see that uh, i have reached the posterior plate already here and i could crack it easily so it is around grade 1 to 2 cataract i would say and i decided that i will continue further with the trench divide here and as you noted that i have shifted my illumination also to the retro illumination mode because i want to see the change in the color and now i am going to do chop here now i can gauge the thickness of the lens well after doing the trenching and now i can chop so i am avoiding burying the phaco tip too deep here just little bit bury and then i have chopped and uh, i started doing the quadrant removal 
I can feel that the posterior capsule is quite anterior because uh, the lens thickness itself is very small. So it's a feeling like the posterior capsule is right there below the phaco tip. So I have reduced my fluidics little bit and what you will notice here is that I am trying to keep my phaco tip right at the center and avoiding any vigorous maneuvers of the phaco tip. So my right hand I am instructing to keep that phaco probe as steady as possible and the tip position I am not going to alter at all here because I want the tip to be exactly at that position not to wander around because the posterior capsule is very close and I am watching carefully for any posterior capsular fluctuations here so far I didn't see any anterior movement of the posterior capsule here so I continued doing fake over here if there was even little bit of fluctuation I would have reduced the vacuum more but this was okay so I could finish off the case without much of an issue as I start the coaxial irrigation aspiration as soon as the infusion starts you can see again there is a reverse pupillary block the patient felt little bit of discomfort and I released it by lifting the iris once that uh, block is uh, released patient is more comfortable and due to the initial rotation of the nucleus you can see that there was hardly any cortex which is remaining which was cleaned off very easily over here the bag is inflated again with the OVD and what I noted here is that still the posterior capsule is not deep so that means the anatomy of this particular lens itself is different maybe that is the anatomical variation of this eye and during the surgery though I, I was of course more uh, cautious about posterior capsule I didn't see any fluctuation so though the lens thickness was less there was no redundancy of the posterior capsule which was good This is the hydrophobic single piece IL which I have inserted in the bag. I always use the non-dominant hand to just nudge that IL in. Again here I expect the LIDRS to occur so what I am doing here is that I have lifted the iris before I entered the IA probe here so that uh, patient doesn't get any discomfort and I could manage that here so this is a good trick to follow in case the patient is sensitive to the stretch of the zonules so you can just avoid uh, this LIDRS or reverse pupillary block from happening by just lifting the iris up before you start the irrigation These different biometry eyes may have some challenges for the IOL for measurements. Now in this particular case I use the Barrett formula and uh, post operatively this patient did well had a predicted well, refractive error no issues there. But uh, in cases where there is excessively deep anterior chamber or excessively shallow I find that the refractive error or the prediction of the post-operative refractive error may not be as accurate and may have some outliers there. That is the hydration of the incision from the side port and from the main incision. It is important that the AC is well formed at the end of the surgery without much of leakage and I asked the patient whether the patient can see the light or not before I finish the surgery 
because it is important to have the right intraocular pressure at the end not too high also so that's the end of the case the i am feeling the eyes little bit of hypotonus so i am hydrating again and again and after removing the speculum also it is good idea to check the intraocular pressure here i felt it was slightly less so i again injected some bss in the eye and some vigamox there and that was good so that is the end of the surgery thank you for watching there are more videos on our website fecotraining.org.in and also subscribe to my youtube channel you can also submit your videos for review and publishing on this website so do that thank you